guys, welcome back to the Time to Watch channel. Hope you're all doing well. I'm super excited for this unboxing and review because this is truly a very special one. I think it's fair for me to say that this piece we have here today is one of the most iconic watches in the world. So I'm definitely incredibly happy to be able to add it to my collection. So let's start the unboxing. As usual, we have the white outer sleeve. So let's slide that out. And then we have the cream colored outer box with the Rolex crown logo embossed on top here. And inside, we have the thin foam sheet, which protects the main watch box, the famous green Rolex box with the wave pattern, and the crown logo at the bottom here. To be honest, a very simple watch box, but the feeling you get whenever you see this box is just indescribable. So let's go ahead and open it up. And there we have the Rolex Submariner date, reference 126610LV, or more commonly known as the Starbucks. So as usual, let's take a look at what we have in the top compartment here. So here we find the spare links. So for my six and three quarter inch wrist, I remove three spare links. I'm just going to set it aside here. We have the superlative chronometer certification green tag. And we also have the white tag here with the reference number and the serial number. And we also have the documentation. So we have the Submariner date instruction booklet. We have the guarantee card, which later we'll take a look at some of the details on that. And at the back, we have the guarantee manual booklet as well. So on the guarantee card, on the other side, we have the model reference. As I mentioned just now, it's 126610LV and purchase date, 27th October, 2022. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep the card back in here. And I'll just go ahead and keep all the documents back here before we take a look at the watch itself. And now we can check out the watch itself. So I'm just gonna bring it up to the camera and look at it at different angles here. It's really a beautiful piece. That color combination, the black dial, and the splash of green in the bezel, it's just really nice to look at. And as usual, we'll go over the dimensions of the watch first. So this watch has a case diameter of 41 millimeters. It has a case thickness of 12.3 millimeters a lock to lock distance of 48.1 millimeters and the solid end link to solid end link measurement here is 51.2 millimeters. So I would recommend this watch for a wrist no smaller than 15 centimeters in circumference. Otherwise the end links may flare out of the wrist slightly and the watch may not look and feel right on the wrist. So the lock width is 21 millimeters and the bracelet tapers down to about 16.5 millimeters where it meets the clasp. And the clasp width here is about 18.5 millimeters. Now the movement in this piece is the Rolex in-house caliber 3235, which beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. And it has a 70 hour power reserve. And the superlative chronometer certification means that this watch will run within the range of minus two to plus two seconds per day. Now let's talk more about the materials used for this piece. Now the case and the bracelet are made of Rolex's proprietary 904L stainless steel, which is extremely corrosion resistant. The sides of the case are polished, as you can see, and the oyster bracelet is entirely brushed on the top surface, true to its tool watch nature, and polished at the flanks. Now the hands and hour markers, as you can see here, are white gold to prevent oxidation and tarnishing over time. 
And of course, the most significant aspect of the Starbucks is that beautiful and striking green ceramic bezel. So let's talk a little bit more about that right now. So the green ceramic insert has carved out markers and numerals that are inlaid with platinum. So that gives a very nice contrast and it will resist tarnishing very well. The ceramic is pretty shiny, so under bright light, as right now, as what you see right now, it does pop quite a bit. And the tone of the green actually appears a little bit more subdued or a little bit more pale in photographs and videos from what I notice. So what I will do is I will be adding some photos and clips at the end of the video in different lightings. Hopefully that will give you guys a better idea of what this green bezel actually looks like in person. So do stay tuned for that. So this bezel is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. So let's check out the bezel action right now. I'm sure you guys can hear that. It is just so unbelievably smooth and crisp. In my opinion, the absolute best bezel action ever. Now the dial is a deep glossy black lacquer. So the hands, the hour markers, and also the text on the dial all have a very sharp contrast. Now we have a date window at the three o'clock position, which comes with a Cyclops magnifier, another distinctive feature of Rolex. The sapphire crystal has anti-reflective coating on the underside, so the dial legibility, even in very bright lighting conditions, is excellent. Now the trip lock crown, denoted by the three dots below the crown logo here, gives the Submariner 300 meters of water resistance, and this crown is an absolute delight to use. The size of the crown is 7 millimeters, and the pronounced knurling on the edge makes it very easy to grip and wind. So let's check out the winding action. Let me just unscrew the crown and I'm just going to bring it closer to the microphone so that hopefully you guys will be able to hear it. So yeah, hopefully you guys heard that. It's a really satisfying winding experience. Now to pull the crown out to set the date and time, here is a little tip that I recently learned. Previously, I always felt that Rolex crowns were sometimes difficult to pull out, like I felt that it required a lot of force to pull the crown out. Well, actually, the correct and easy way to do it, especially if you have the habit of winding the watch before setting the date and time, is to just rotate the crown counterclockwise a little bit, just like that, and then pull it out. So I'm just going to pull it out one time now, which activates the date change. See? As effortless as it should be. Now, if you were not aware of this, please go and try it out and let me know in the comment section if you find it easier this way. Anyway, I hope you guys find this helpful. Now, the instantaneous date change is another well-appreciated feature in Rolex watches. So let's see how that looks like. Not only is it visually more appealing, the tactile feedback you get when the date changes is also very satisfying. Additionally, instant date change also means that there is no danger zone for the date change, so changing the date at any time of the day, even between 9pm to 3am, will not damage the movement, giving you more peace of mind. With regards to setting the time, let's pull out the crown one more time, which also activates the hacking seconds and now you're free to adjust the time. So there is a very good level of resistance, which makes it feel very high quality, which is also something I really appreciate about Rolex watches. Everything just feels of high quality. I'm just gonna screw the crown back in. All right, now when it comes to the bracelet, Rolex's 3-link Oyster Bracelet is hands down one of my favorite bracelets. Notice how each link, let's view it from the side here. So notice how each link is slightly curved, so it wraps around the wrist perfectly. It's actually really impressive just how comfortable this bracelet is. Now the Submariner's clasp, let me just open that up.
So the clasp has a lift lock system and a clamshell. So let's just see how that works. I'm just going to close the clasp back in and you'll notice that the beak and the hook here, they actually snap shut and then you use the clamshell to provide even more security. And the glide lock extension makes it one of the best clasps in the market. It is substantial, secure, and so easy to use, which is everything you would be looking for in a clasp. So let's just check out how it works. All you do is just pull the link downwards here, and then you're free to slide the adjustment in and out, which gives you a total of 20 millimeters of adjustment, on-the-fly adjustment, which is very, very convenient. And then once you have your desired adjustment, just push it back in and you're good to go. So regardless whether your wrist expands or contracts throughout the day, you can be sure to get the perfect fit with this glide lock system. So now let's check out how this piece looks on the wrist. Okay, wrist roll time. And there we go. I just really love this piece. It just fits so nicely, like what I mentioned just now. That bracelet just sits so comfortably. And the dial and the bezel, just the right amount of contrast. I think it looks really good. And the 12.3 millimeter case thickness helps it sit very nicely on the wrist. And the slim down lux, as compared to the previous Submariner, reference 116610, also enhances the comfort on wrist. And the overall aesthetics of the watch also appear more proportionate and elegant. Personally, I think that the black dial and green bezel just work so well. It provides just the right amount of contrast without being too loud. Finally, let's kill the lights and check out how well the loom on the Submariner performs. So it's already glowing pretty brightly here, but I'm just going to charge it up to its maximum. I'll just give it a few more seconds and let's check it out now. So once again, Rolex's Chromolite Blue Loom does not disappoint. And the blue tone, I just think it looks so good. I really love this loom. And the brightness, it also lasts for a really long time. Like if before you go to bed, if it's charged to its maximum, it will actually stay lit throughout the night. So that's it with this review. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you find it entertaining and informative, please like, subscribe, and share this video. I would greatly appreciate that. Also, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I will do my best to answer them. Let me know your thoughts on this watch. Is it your favorite Submariner? Or do you think the previous Submariner Hulk with the sunburst green dial looks better than this one? I would love to know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you guys in the next video.